Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yesh Chonzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 24th of June. Daily recoveries outnumber new COVID cases in India while vaccination gathers pace. Previous governments responsible for Pakistan's name on FATF greatly says Foreign Minister Qureshi. And Afghan leaders arrive in Washington to meet U.S. President, discuss Taliban advances, troops pull out. And now for all the details. India's COVID-19 cases tally climbed to 30.08 million after the country recorded 54,069 new infections. However, the daily recoveries have continued to outnumber new cases for the 42nd consecutive day, while countrywide vaccination drive has gathered pace. India on Thursday recorded 54,069 cases and 1,321 deaths due to COVID-19, taking the case load to 30.08 million with 391,981 deaths so far. The total recoveries have climbed to 29.06 million after 68,885 people were discharged from hospital in the last 24 hours. The daily recoveries have continued to outnumber the new infections for the 42nd consecutive day. Meanwhile, coronavirus vaccination drive is going on in full swing across India with tens of thousands of people coming forward to get inoculated as the central government kicked off free inoculation for all adults earlier this week, reversing its previous vaccine policy. India's health ministry on Thursday said more than 30 crore vaccine doses have been provided to states and union territories until now, out of which more than 1.89 crores unutilized doses are still available to be administered. The vaccine shortage was not there. You can get a walking here. You can get a vaccination. And in the future, you can get a future of the third wave of the third wave. Meanwhile, the new Delta Plus variant of COVID-19 has increased worries in India while the second wave subsides. On Wednesday, India's central Madhya Pradesh state reports its first death out of five patients identified with the Delta Plus variant. Around 40 cases of the new variant of concern, which carries a mutation that appears to make the virus more transmissible, have been reported across the country. The Indian Army on Thursday successfully destroyed a live mortar bomb in Poonch district of northern Jammu and Kashmir territory. This came on the day Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi held face-to-face -face talks with top political leaders from Jammu and Kashmir on Thursday, the first such meeting since his government revoked the region's special status in 2019. Indian Army successfully destroyed a live mortar bomb in Poonch district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory on Thursday. The bomb reportedly belonging to Pakistan was found in a field. The Army personnel reached the spot on receiving the information from villagers and took the bomb to a different location and destroyed it. Kashmir is a Muslim-majority region at the heart of decades of hostility between India and Pakistan, and both sides often exchange fire along the borders. However, a ceasefire has remained in place since February. This came a day after a terrorist was neutralized by security forces in an encounter in Jammu and Kashmir's Shopian district on Wednesday evening. Earlier on Monday, three terrorists, including a top commander of Pakistan-based lashkar e taiba were gunned down in a similar encounter in support town. India has long accused neighboring Pakistan of training and infiltrating terrorists to mount attacks on Indian soil. Pakistan, however, denies the allegations. Moving on, the ongoing Financial Action Task Force meet will this week decide Pakistan's fate to stay or move out of the grey list. Ahead of the decision, Pakistan's foreign minister has alleged that previous governments did not take steps to curb money laundering and terrorist financing in the country. Pakistan is trying hard to convince FATF that it has implemented 26 of the 27-point FATF action plan to move out of the grey list. 
At a time when Pakistan's fate at the FATF, the Financial Action Task Force, is under the scanner this week, Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi on Tuesday alleged that previous governments did not take steps to curb money laundering and terror financing in the country. Qureshi said that the previous government of PMLN, Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, was responsible for the country being placed on the grey list of FATF. And when PTI, Pakistan Tahrike Insaf, came to power, Pakistan had already gone into grey list. The statement came as the global anti-money laundering watchdog is set to discuss a report on the progress made by Pakistan on the implementation of a 27-point action plan this week and the outcome will be announced on June 25. The Paris-based FATF placed Pakistan on the grey list in June 2018 and asked Islamabad to implement a plan of action to curb money laundering and terror financing by the end of 2019. But the deadline was extended later on due to the COVID-19 pandemic. In February, the FATF gave a fourth extension to Pakistan to fully implement a 27-point action plan and strongly urged it to meet the remaining three conditions about terror financing investigations and the United Nations Security Council resolutions. Pakistan has been struggling to come out of grey list for non-compliance with anti-money laundering and terrorist financing regulations by FATF a measure that officials fear could further hurt its economy. More news from Pakistan. Jamaat e Islami Party recently staged a protest over prolonged power outages and hefty electricity bills in Pakistan's largest city, Karachi. The protesters, including local residents, blamed negligence by the government to address the issue amid the ongoing pandemic situation. The jamaat islami party recently held a protest against the prolonged and extensive load shedding of electricity along with the hefty billing outside the head office of K Electric in Pakistan's Karachi city, urging Prime Minister Imran Khan to take notice of issue amid the pandemic. President of jamaat islamis Karachi chapter Hafiz Naimur Rahman said that private electricity provider K Electric has failed to increase power generation as per an agreement and despite extensive load shedding of 12 to 14 hours people are receiving thousands of rupees worth of bills aur unhone kaha ki kal se load shedding karachi mein nahi hogi aur humne k electric ko keh diya hai ab inke gas mein bhi izafa kar diya gaya hai aur jo inhone wafaq se bijli mangi thi wo bhi de di gayi hai aur wo kal ek saal guzarne ke baad bhi aaj tak nahi aayi hai the protesters stated that they have been harassed with frequent load shedding for over a year now with no solution in sight. They also raised slogans against rising inflation and incompetent policies of the government. Moving on to news from Afghanistan. Top Afghan leaders including President Ashraf Ghani and Abdullah Abdullah arrived on a two-day visit to Washington on Thursday. They will be meeting U.S. President Joe Biden at the White House on Friday to discuss the U.S. troop withdrawal amid a surge in fighting between Afghan forces and the Taliban across the country. The visit comes at a time the Taliban are making huge advances across the country. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani on Wednesday evening left Kabul for a two-day visit to Washington, where he will hold separate meetings with U.S. President Joe Biden, members of Congress and the Senate, high-ranking government officials, among others. Ghani is accompanied by First Vice President Amrullah Saleh, Abdullah Abdullah, head of the High Council for National Reconciliation and other government officials. Abdullah, in a tweet on Thursday, said discussions will be held on a wide range of issues pertaining to current and future relations, commitments and peace. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said on Wednesday that the Pentagon is overseeing an orderly withdrawal of U.S. forces from Afghanistan and the United States has not seen an increase in violence directed against its troops in the country in the past year. Um, I will say that um, while in general we are seeing um, elevated attacks um, on uh, DSF and Afghan government versus a year ago, um, 
We have not seen an increase in attacks on our military or presence since February 2020. Uh, and we also assess um, that had we not begun to draw down, violence would have increased against us as well after May 1st, because that was what the Taliban was clearly conveying. Um, so the status quo, in our view, was not an option. On Wednesday, hundreds of former Afghan Mujahideen and other residents of northern Kabul held a rally supporting Afghan security forces in their fight against the Taliban. As international forces withdraw, Taliban have conducted a wave of offensives in Afghanistan's north in recent days, moving beyond their southern strongholds. مجاهدین هستیم در وقت و مقابلش استاد شدیم حال هم کدش در مقابلش استاد هستیم اون نمیمونه میشه که یک بلس پیش بده وطن ما و در خاک ما حتما نابودش میکنیم Violence has also escalated throughout the country as the insurgent group seeks more territory Meanwhile, the peace talks in Doha have largely stopped, officials say, though there have been meetings in recent days and the Taliban say they are committed to talks In news from Nepal Residents aged 77 and above in Nepal's Lalitpur received their second and final dose of the COVID-19 vaccine Covishield on Wednesday, which was administered from the leftover stock from the previous inoculation drives. Nepal is still undecided when it will be able to provide second dose to thousands of citizens after India curtailed the exports of the vaccines amid a surge in infections. Scores of residents aged 77 and above in Nepal's Lalitpur metropolitan city received their second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, Covishield, on Wednesday, which arrived after a long gap. Vaccination centers in the city saw elderly people in masks arriving with their kin to get their final jab, which was administered from leftover stock from previous inoculation drives. Nepal had begun its vaccination campaign on January 27 with Covishield vaccine manufactured in India, but until now it is still undecided when it will be able to provide the second dose to thousands of citizens after India banned vaccine exports amid the surge in cases there. Out of 2.7 million vaccines that have been administered in Nepal, most of them were handed over as aid by India and China. The Himalayan nation was able to procure only 1 million vaccines from India on commercial basis. As of Thursday morning, Nepal's COVID-19 cases tally surged past 627,850 with 8,894 deaths so far. The presiding deities of famed Lord Jagannath Temple in India's eastern Puri city were brought out for the Holy Bathing Festival on Thursday amid coronavirus pandemic. Every year, devotees assemble in large numbers to attend the ritual. However, this time, only the temple workers who had completed their vaccination course were allowed to bathe the idols. The famous annual bathing ritual of the Hindu gods, Lord Jagannath and his siblings, Lord Balbhadra and Devi Subhadra, was held on Thursday in Puri district of India's eastern Odisha state amid restrictions imposed to curb coronavirus spread. Amid the raging pandemic, there were no devotees around and strict security was in place as priests bathed the idols of Lord Jagannath and his siblings with 108 pitchers of aromatic water during the bathing ceremony. Only fully vaccinated people with COVID-19 negative report were allowed in the temple premises. <laughs> खत्म कर कर ही जाएंगे फिर रथ यात्रा होगा ये होगा प्रभु का नीला में जो समर्पित हो जाएगा उसको करुणा परुणा कुछ नहीं होगा Every year devotees assemble in large numbers to attend the ritual which marks the beginning of a chariot festival however this time the scene was different with coronavirus restrictions in place as of Thursday India reported 30.08 million cases of coronavirus well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Asia Newsline. 
and follow us on Twitter at Asia News Line. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.